Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Bree. If you can tell by the title of this video, we are going to be telling a very exciting story today, and that is my labor and delivery story and how I became a mom. So this is my little man. This is Gabriel. If you guys follow me on Instagram, uh, you will have met him already. I'll post the picture right up in here. And as you can tell, he has the hiccups right now. But I wanted to tell you guys my labor and delivery story. Um, it's not super exciting and, you know, crazy, but I love watching these videos. And so I wanted to share mine. So you will see he is joining us for this video. He just got done napping and eating. So he is in cuddly mode right now. And like I said, he has the hiccups. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so I took a break from YouTube last year and part of me kind of wishes that I hadn't because I kind of wanted to document my pregnancy through videos. Um, I documented it a lot through pictures, which again, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw them all there, all my bump dates and everything. But I did find out I was pregnant last April, in April of 2021 and I gave birth to my son in December of 2021. He was born at exactly 38 weeks and I was not expecting him two weeks early, to be completely honest. I had started to have a lot of Braxton Hicks around the like 24, 25 week mark, um, mainly when I would be like dehydrated, stressed, working too much, things like that. I would get them and as I got closer to, you know, being full term, and everything like that, they started to get more consistent, they started to get worse, and I was like, all right, maybe it could be time for baby. But I definitely wasn't ready for him. We had just moved into our apartment and had not even set up the crib, the bassinet, nothing. We, we were not ready for baby. However, the morning of December 20th, I had gotten up, was getting ready for work, and I felt what I thought were contractions, but I didn't know for certain if they were contractions or if they were just Braxton Hicks, and they weren't consistent or anything, so I was able to talk through them, breathe through them, everything, so I called my mom just to let her know, like, hey, I'm not really sure, I'm gonna keep an eye on them, but like, I, I don't know what these are, I don't know if they are contractions or not, and you know, I'd let my boyfriend know that I was having them um, and I wasn't sure, all this stuff. I get ready for work, I take my 38 week bump photo, I am still having these contractions, not really sure what is going on. I get going to work, everything's fine, everything's great. I'm still able to talk through them, I'm still able to laugh through them, I can walk, like all of the signs that they say, you know, if you're having true contractions, you can't do these things. I could, still could, so I was like, maybe these aren't contractions, maybe they're just some strong Braxtons, you know, we are at 38 weeks, we still got two weeks, whatever, you know, big deal. I get to work, I let my leaders know, like, hey, just so you're aware, this is going on, I'm not really sure, so if I suddenly say, like, I gotta go, like, that's why. And they're like, oh my god, did, why did you show up to work? And I'm like, they're not that bad, yet. So I get to work, I start working, and I had been tracking them on my phone just so I had them written down, and they were not consistent at all. They were at different time intervals, they were lasting for different lengths of time. So the, we were nowhere close to like the 511 rule and everything, and I can't have my phone out at work. So I got down a little piece of paper, and I work in front of a computer, so I was able to keep track of them by watching the clock, writing them down and everything. And close to about 11.30, I would say, they started to get consistent. They were not lasting exactly the amount, same amount of time, but definitely staying around that minute range, whether they were just shy of a minute or just over a minute. And we were at about 10 minutes apart, and then we were about eight minutes apart, and then for a long time they were consistently six to seven minutes apart for a little over an hour and a half, I think. I don't know the exact timing, but 
I'm still able to breathe through them, still able to kind of talk through them. And my job, I was sitting, so you know, it wasn't that big a deal. I wasn't having to walk or anything. My water hadn't broken. So I go on break at about two o'clock and I'm sitting there eating. I'm trying to eat some chicken tenders, trying to drink some water. And they are so bad at this point. I cannot get comfortable at all. I can't sit, I can't stand. I can breathe through them, I can talk, but I am definitely uncomfortable. And so I call my mom, I'm texting my boyfriend. I'm like, I think these are the thing. I think these are it. And they're like, yeah, sounds like it. You, you're in labor. I'm like, okay. And so my boyfriend runs to his manager to let him know that he has to leave and come pick me up to take me to the hospital. Luckily he works close by, so, you know, it wasn't gonna take him, you know, an hour to get to me. And I waddle my way over to my leader's office and I'm like, hey, I'm in labor. <laughs> my contractions are six minutes apart and they're very painful. And my boyfriend's on his way to come get me, but I gotta go. They're like, oh, yeah. And so a bunch of my coworkers and I are sitting in the back and my manager is keeping an eye on me until my boyfriend gets there and we're timing them. We are breathing through them. We're talking through them. They're trying to make me laugh, like everything, just to keep me distracted. My manager was ready to catch my son if it came down to it. She was more than ready to catch him. Another one of my coworkers is freaking out. She's like, absolutely not. We are not having a baby in the back office, but it's fine. So my boyfriend gets there, we get to the hospital and we got to triage at about 3.30 and I am in so much pain. I'm having to physically stop in between, like while we're walking to breathe through the contractions. I am having trouble talking through them, everything like that. So we know it's the real deal at this point. We get to triage, they hook me up on the monitors, they start checking me, and when they checked my cervix, I was only at a three centimeter. So they were like, okay, you're not that far yet. Let's you know, keep an eye on you for about an hour. We'll check you again and go from there. Hi. <laughs> and we're like, okay. She brings me a comb, like a little dollar store comb to use as a pain management technique of holding it in my hand with the bristles to my palm and squeezing because it's been found that your brain can only focus on one type of pain. That comb had nothing on these contractions. Absolutely nothing. These contractions were so painful. And at this point, I, somebody is uh, very interested in his story. Yes. <laughs> and he's also watching the ceiling fan above me. But, these contractions are getting so bad. And at this point, I am starting to lose feeling in my left side. I'm starting to go numb. I can't feel my hands. I could grip, but I couldn't tell that I was gripping. I was trying to text my mom to keep her updated. I couldn't text. I was having such a hard time with that. I tried to go use the restroom and they wanted to get a sample of my urine and everything. It is so hard to open a bottle when you can't feel one of your hands. I just want you to know that. But fast forward about, I'd say 45 minutes from when we got there and I'm in so much pain, I'm in tears. And I tell my boyfriend, I'm like, this is, this is painful. I'm like, get that nurse, we need to figure out where we're at. And so he goes out, tells them to come check me again. And at this point I'm up to a five centimeter. So I'm definitely progressing, definitely in labor and they decide to admit me and get me into a labor and delivery room to keep an eye on me. And at this point I am begging for the epidural. I want those pain meds so bad right now. And so we finally get into a labor and delivery room and the nurse in there is checking me and uh, putting me on the monitor and looking at these contractions, she's like, I guess she told my boyfriend something along the lines of this girl needs an epidural like yesterday because she saw how much pain I was in, saw the monitor, how they were recording the contractions, everything like that. At some point between getting into the labor and delivery room and like filling out some of the paperwork 
and my mom showing up, I passed out. I like blacked out for a few minutes, for like 30 seconds or something. And I thought it had happened, but I wasn't sure. So later on, I had asked my boyfriend, I was like, did I black out? Did I pass out at all? And he's like, yeah, you did. I'm like, okay, good to know. So my mom shows up and she had come to our apartment to take my dog back to her house because my grandma was here to watch uh, my siblings, take my dog to her house, get our hospital bags, and then come up to the hospital. Bless my mother for doing all that running for us. Oh. So at this point, my mom shows up, she has our hospital bags, and a little bit later, the anesthesiologist comes in to give me my epidural. And at this point, it's probably like 5.30ish, I think. And they're explaining the epidural. Bless you. Bless you. They're explaining the epidural to me and letting me know that it will probably kick in in about 30 to 45 minutes. And we've got to sit you up and do all this and on and on and on and on and, on and all this stuff. And I'm kind of blocking it out because I am in so much pain. I just want the pain meds. And so they sit me up on the edge of the bed and start getting me prepped for it and everything. And my contractions were hitting super hard to the point I could not sit still. I couldn't control, you know, my flinching and my tensing and everything. And they kept trying to get me to calm down and to relax and everything and sit still because at one point, I guess the needle was, you know, almost in my back and I had moved and the anesthesiologist just stopped because she didn't want to paralyze me and everything and they I think genuinely thought I wasn't gonna be able to get the epidural so we finally got it finally calmed down enough to get it and laid back and I kid you not 10 minutes later I'm looking at the monitor and I'm not feeling a single contraction. It kicked in for me so quickly. And we're watching the contractions on the monitor. They're still registering. Bah, bah. They're still registering in the 60s and 70s. I'm not feeling them. And my nurse comes in. At this point, my water still had not broken. My doctor was running around between, you know, multiple different rooms because there were four other women in labor at the same time that I was. And my nurse is doing massages and everything and we're trying different techniques to get me progressing. And around, I think, 8 or 8.30? It wasn't too, too long. It was only a couple hours after I got the epidural. I am measuring at 8 centimeters or 8.5 centimeters. And my nurse is doing some massages down there because my hospital avoids episiotomy if they can. So they do a lot of uh, massaging and just kind of relaxing of the muscles and everything. So she goes to check my cervix again and my water still had not broken. And she's sitting there talking to us while she's checking and I'm not feeling anything. I feel, I feel great. Aside from puking once, that was gross. I tried to drink some ginger ale because I was on clear liquids only. Tried to drink some ginger ale to help with the nausea. Puked that up right away. And oh, and so they gave me a Zofran, which is what I was on my entire pregnancy for severe nausea. And she's sitting there talking to us and my water breaks with her hand inside me. My water breaks and she's like, well, you are at nine and a half centimeters now. I'm like, okay. And this is about 8.30, 8.40. Hi. <laughs> I'm getting smiles out of him. But it's about 8.30, 8.40. My water breaks. We're at nine and a half centimeters. And she's like, all right, we are going to sit you completely straight up and let gravity finish pulling him, you know, bringing him down. I have a photo that my mom took of me sitting in this super upright position. I look so done. I am so over labor at this point and I just want my child here, which I'll put that on screen. 
And so I am sitting in that position for a few minutes. They come back in, I'm at a 10 centimeter. They're like, great, let's prep you to push. Let's do this. And I know a lot of people say that when you're ready to push, you're gonna feel that urge to poop. I never got that urge. However, I did do that on the table like while I was pushing. So, you know, gross parts of labor. And so my doctor comes in, we're working through it and everything, and it took about 45 minutes of pushing and working and massaging and everything for him to come out. He was born at 9.35 p.m. He was seven pounds, eight ounces, and 20 inches long. So he was on the shorter side and smaller side of average, which is perfectly fine by me. I was a seven pound, seven ounce baby, and his dad was a 10 ounce baby, or a 10 pound baby. So I much prefer the seven, seven pounds, eight ounces over the 10 pounds. So we got him here. He is perfect. He was 100% healthy. We didn't have any anything with jaundice or anything like that, which I am forever grateful for. And I was very fortunate enough to only have a small first degree tear that required one stitch. So I am forever grateful for my nurses and my doctor for taking care of me down there and basically saving me, if you get what I mean. That being said, all you ladies out there who go through labor and delivery without an epidural, either by choice or by not being able to, and getting major tears, major stitches, everything like that, you ladies are rock stars, you are amazing. I fully commend you because I know that my wimpy butt could not do that. So ladies, all the power to you. But fast forward, we are now almost seven weeks postpartum. We have an almost seven week old little man here. Life has been doing all right. And we have adjusted very well to having a baby around, going through that newborn phase, getting him on a sleeping and eating schedule. I kind of do things on demand with him right now just to let him figure it out. And we are breastfeeding. So if you want a video all about my breastfeeding journey and where we're at with that and how that's going, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more videos from me, feel free to hit that subscribe button. If you hit that little notification bell, you will be notified every time I upload a video. I am going to work my butt off this year to actually be more active on YouTube, especially with some mommy content and some videos relating to him, pregnancy, postpartum, um, newborn phase, all that fun stuff. So if you're interested, feel free to stick around and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.